What is going on, Mother Truckers? I know I never jump in here and do some lives, but I just want to jump in here today and give you guys some information. And hopefully you guys can get something from this. Uh, we have a special guest today, and he's going to be talking about how to basically start a trucking fleet from A to Z. And there are so many ways to do it. You can start it within a company. Uh, you can start and get your own MC numbers and do this yourself. But it's just one of those things where we're going to be talking about his story and how he did it. And so he's not going to be in there quite yet for about the next five to maybe 10 minutes because he's actually dropping off uh, a trailer. And so he can bring that up. But I just wanted to let you guys know that um, we're going to have a guest today and I want to jump on live just to give people opportunity to jump on. And then I can edit the video later. Can people hear me okay? Hello, hello. Just check in. Can I type on here? I'll say, what's up? What's up? You know, if uh, my audio is okay, uh, give me a unicorn emoji. You know, what's going on, Dirty Broke? How are you doing, sir? Hopefully you're doing good. Uh, you guys hear me okay? Oh, great, great. That's what I'm talking about, man. And uh, we're on here a little bit early. I just want to, you know, say thank you so much first, just for all this dang support, man. I, I can't believe it. It's it's ridiculous that uh, the show has even gone this far where I'm just psyched that we probably helped out like hundreds, maybe some thousands of truck drivers, dude. Like that's the dopest thing ever. And so, you know, I just... <laughs> I just want to say hi to everybody. And within the next probably 10 minutes or so, if you guys don't mind me just being on for a second before my guest comes on, um, you know, just saying hi to everybody. Uh, Ryan Kim, hi, how are you doing? Uh, Leonard H, what's up? Dirty Broke. Dirty Broke's my guy. Uh, he's given information that's top secret information about things, and he has never wanted anything uh, in return. And he, you know, it's just a great person. So if you guys get a chance, uh, subscribe to Dirty Broke. Really good person. Um, Hector, what's going on, man? Yoda Mike, what's good? Hey, Flight 000, sounds good. That's what's up. Ryan Kim, how you doing? Uh, Corey Harvey, 1989. What's up, Marcos? Giving the unicorns. Dean, hey, what's up, Dean? Uh, just trucking guys on authority and, and running a truck trailer out of SC. Good channel. Good stuff, man. Uh, I always love when people are just doing great and spreading love and good information. I know sometimes uh, trucking YouTubers or whatever, they, they got drama. They got all these things going on. I, I'm, I'll be honest. I'm eating potato chips too, and I'm loving it. But it's it's one of those things where... I just, I love it that we're spreading positivity. That's all I ever want, right? And so that's what you're going to get if you jump onto this channel. Uh, Ash NYC, he gives a goat. Where'd you get a goat emoji? I don't even know if I have a goat emoji. Um, Mr. Chapstick, uh, 2010. Alex, can we talk about your clickbait titles and thumbnails? Yes, let's talk about that. Uh, Yip Nguyen, hey, what's going on, brother? How you doing? Hip Nguyen is a, a really good guy, good friend. Um, I believe met him out in Fresno. Okay, Mr. Chapstick, 2010, asks, uh, Alex, can we talk about your clickbait titles and thumbnails? So I really do want to talk about that too. Uh, let's let's put that up. Um, what up? Right here. Sorry, Corey. We as truckers or wannabe truckers, our family love the family here. Love you too, Corey. That's what's up. Let's see. Alex, can we talk about your clickbait titles and thumbnails? Laugh out loud. Yes, we can. Okay. I'm going to be honest with you guys. People ask me all the time, Alex, why do you put Jenna out like that? And, you know, why are you disrespecting her? And the truth is, me and Jenna have been together for 10 years. I love this girl so much. And 
to be real honest, I think this girl is like the, the hottest thing. And after 10 years to feel that way about your girl, I think that's an accomplishment. But we're just goofy, you know? Uh, don't think it's me. Uh, she's the one. She's the mark. I'm going to blame her. She's the marketing genius that tells me, Alex, you need to have better thumbnails. And I'm like, okay, what should I put? And she'll be like, put this thumbnail. And I go, I like that picture. And then she'll put it on and that's it. So you guys tell me if you guys don't want me to put thumbnails of Jenna anymore, then I won't put thumbnails of her. Okay. So let me know in the comments if you still want the thumbnails of Jenna. If not, then I could just put very subtle, conservative, church-going thumbnails of uh, her and myself. <laughs> so uh, let me know what you think. Um, yes, uh, Mr. Chapstick, she is definitely cool with it. Uh, she's the one that sends me the thumbnails. All right. She does my thumbnails. That's the truth. Okay. Uh, Ash NYC, you're the best. No, you're the best. All right. Uh, Ahmed, uh, Al, you are awesome, man. I am at the trucking school. Next week is my test day. Wish me good luck. Ahmed, I wish you good luck. You know, I don't even know if we have a, a, a truck thing, but anyone that has a truck emoji, let's, let's wish, let's wish our guy here the best of luck. So Ahmed, we wish you the best of luck. I'm putting trucking emojis right now. Okay. And so, <laughs> so if you're just jumping on right now, uh, also definitely put on some truck emojis as well. And uh, we'll be good to go. Our guests will be jumping on shortly. Actually, you know what? Check this out. Let me see. That's the link right there. If anyone wants to join the show just for a little bit before I have the guest on uh, and, and talk about how to kind of get in the mindset and start your own fleet, you could jump on right now. You know, so anyone that wants to jump on, uh, let me know. Jump on, chill for a little bit until we get our guests. Let's see. Dirty Broke showing love to Ahmed. You know, we're wishing you the best. Uh, uh, we got... Annette uh, Sager and Tanette Sager truck emojis. LA Skeet truck emojis. I'm telling you, man, we are more than just this little group here. You know, we're a community, man. We're here with each other. But yeah, if anyone wants to jump on, I got my little stream yard thing going on. You guys could jump on and uh, just say what's up or whatever you want to do. Shout out to anyone you want. You want to. Uh, shout out your own channel. That's cool, too. We could do that. You know? Look. I mess says thanks, guys, man. That's that's what the community is about, yo. That's what's up. <laughs> but what's going on? What's going on, Lance? How are you doing? So anyone want to jump on? BS for a little bit till we get our little guest here. Uh, not little guest. Big guest. Then jump on. This is uh, the little uh, link right there. You guys can see that. And go ahead and jump on. We can say what's up or say hi to the mama. Say hi to your mama, my mama, or whatever. But, yeah, I do apologize. I, I don't go live enough, you know. And so I should do it more often. But, you know, oh, you know what? I actually have someone here that wanted to jump on and ask a question. Let me see. Let me see. Maybe you guys can help. Let me text them real quick. I'm doing. Let me see. I have a subscriber that has a question. Maybe you guys can answer for him and maybe he'll jump on. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw my last video, but I uh, I, I really appreciate you guys for, uh, you know, the 50,000 subscribers. And because of that, 
uh, I put my phone number out there. But if you guys have any questions at all, need to jump on. You don't got to show your face or anything. I think you could just jump on this and not show your face to the camera and ask your questions. You know, but let's see if we got someone jumping on right now. Hello, hello. Can you hear me, Leo? Hey, what's going on, man? How you doing? Good chilling, bro. Uh, you know, I'm hanging out right now. Uh, we're just yeah, BSing. Okay. You want to show love to anyone or if you have a question about anything? <laughs> um, um, honestly, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a company driver at the moment. Uh, I'm, actually, I'm actually driving at the moment, so I don't know say anything. Hands free, though. Um, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking to, to get in, uh, get into my own truck soon. So I, I'm just here on the on the, the live stream trying to get some more information or get as much information as I can before I even. Oh uh, hell! Oh, can. you're gonna love this video today because yeah, I actually yeah. have my man that uh, he has four trucks. He's running his own truck as well, and he has his own MC number. And okay. it's not one of those situations where uh, you know how like a lot of guys and no disrespect to them. They say they run their own fleets, but then mm -hmm. they're just running under a company, leasing yeah. trucks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My man here is not doing that. Okay. My man's actually okay. just chilling. And so, you know, that's what's up. Let's see. Uh-oh. Dirty broke in the house. What's up, you bro? Know. Chilling, what's man. Good? We're doing hey. a little live. I, I never, I'm trying to be like you and do these lives, man. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say real quick, man. I ain't going to hold you. I ain't going to clog the show, man. I just want to say salute, congrats on the 50,000, man. Keep it moving. Keep pushing yeah. that positive energy, man, and we're going to watch you grow, bro. Oh, man. Hey, you're the best, man. You need to be on my show again soon because you you got the knowledge, bro. We'll you already know that. There. We'll get back in there. Salute, Leo. I'll see you. Hey, peace. All right, be good. Yes, sir. Yeah, so Dirty Broke, he does tankers. So a lot of oh, people okay. – okay. so anyone that wants to jump in and do tankers – you could jump in and you could make some money because some people don't want to make that step and mm. uh, start their, driving their own truck. And the thing about Dirty Broke is uh, he got quadruple the experience I got. You feel me? So yeah. he could go on his own easy. But for people that want to, you know, I, I think today is going to be a good video. It'll put you in the right mindset because um, I'll be honest with you. A lot of company drivers actually make more money than owner operators. You know what I'm saying? Mm, yeah, yeah. It happens like that. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not saying that to, you know, discourage you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you got to think deep. If you want to be an owner operator, are you okay with looking over your own bills? Are you okay with mm -hmm. finding truck parking? Are you okay with having your own maintenance fund? You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely, definitely. And, you know, you have you don't have to answer that question out loud, but you got to think to yourself, are you an organized person like that? Because you know what gets or, uh, owner operators? Uh, taxes. taxes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they'll brag all day, Leo, that they made $150,000, $200,000 that year mm -hmm. until I start asking them questions like, so how much are you paying for your quarterly taxes? And they're like, what are you talking about? And I'd be like, uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh -oh. Like, they own the IRS and probably you get out of business like that. Hell yeah. Yeah, but you know, and that's but that's what it comes down to, man. And, uh, hmm. you know, um, is there a, a question that you have uh, directly so that I can ask um, our, our guest tonight? Yeah, so I guess uh, my question would be, because, um, you know, I'm, I'm saving up right now to get a, a down payment for for truck, you know, um, uh, to get funding, for, you know, to finance the truck and everything. And um, I was wondering, is it is it smarter to just go out and get my own like DOT number, or would it be better to ease into the industry and lease on to a, another a carrier and kind of get started off that way? Hmm. Yeah, that would be a good question to ask. You know, okay. because uh, I'm gonna get that question answered for you. As far as you know, if you start your own MC numbers, mm -hmm. will that hurt you with no experience if you're trying to do spot market? You know things like that. Mm. Okay. So, definitely, I got you. Okay. That's what's up. Yeah, appreciate it. Hell yeah, bro. Yeah, I'll let you drive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hands free, man. I promise you. <laughs> uh huh. Uh, All right, brother. But, uh, I'll talk to you later. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Yes, sir.
All right, mother truckers. You know, I think our our, our guest is going to jump in in a little bit, but we definitely have a you know a good thing, man. I need to start. I need to start doing more lives like this. You know what I'm saying? Why not? You know, it doesn't hurt no one. Um, say no says hi, Alex. Thanks for always being there. I just got my seat and have my tanker and double triples endor endorsements. What company do y'all recommend that's paying good for new drivers? I don't know. Dirty broke. You think you could plug them? Is that a company or what would you recommend? Uh, you know, doing tankers yourself. You know, I think dirty broke can answer that question for you. Uh, Let me see what's going on here. Let's see. Let's see. Let me get into these. Raymond says, sup, bro? Tiff, Tiff Solomon. He, he's doing the uh, the the truck emoji, so that's what's up. Uh, Kaja says, hey, Asian Mai, how you doing? Corey Harvey, uh, what is uh, StreamYard, boss man? Just click on it, and you could jump in. You know what I mean? Is that easy? You know. So let's see. Say no. I says I text you on sale. I'm asking on live to see who's hiring new drivers with good pay. So hey guys, are there any good companies out there? My guy is looking for better jobs, man. And so please plug them up if you guys know something. Um More thumbs up for our man here. Hey, thanks, Dean. Shape World, what's going on? Shape World. I'm, if you're not driving, call in, call in. We're just playing around here. Introduce your channel stuff. You have a great channel over there. You know? I got to... I'm learning how to use all this live stuff, too. I got the link right here, Shape. If you want to jump in for a second. Uh, let's see. Uh, dirty broke. You missed the question. Uh, basically he has his doubles and tankers and he's new and he's wondering dirty broke. Where's a good spot, a uh, good spot for him to start. You know what I'm saying? I know you have some experience with that. So I didn't know if there was any opportunities there for a company like the one you're working at or not. You know what I mean? But that's, that was his question. Let me see who, let's see who we got here real quick. Hello. Hello. Hey man, how you doing? Hey, how are you doing? Man, look at that sexy ass beard. I'm upset. <laughs> I can't grow none of this, you know. Man, you guys need to be damn models, man. What are you doing trucking? Oh uh, man, I'm rolling through Mississippi at the moment. About to hit um uh, Alabama. Oh, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. Uh shout outs to anyone. You got a YouTube channel, you got anything, you know I'm all love over here. Mm, nah, Anything I've just been you following a uh, big fan of you, a uh, big fan of HT, man. And y'all just keep putting out good content for YouTube, man. And I appreciate it. Um, I've been driving about nine years. Uh, I do own my own truck, currently doing dry van, but I'm going to switch back to uh, flatbed in a minute. Hell yeah. But other, other than that, man, I just want to give y'all a shout out, man, and uh, wish all the YouTube family, man, much love. And I'll check y'all out here on the road. Oh, man. Thank you so much. And I love HT. I look up to HT. So anyone, I know HT, his ass ain't in this, but you know, if, if you jump on HT's channel, please let him know. I look up to that guy, you know? And, uh, yeah. and man, nine years experience, you know, more than me, brother. The only difference is you just don't want to put that pretty face on YouTube. That's the <laughs> only difference, man. But, you know, uh, man. I got to have you, you on the show man. one of these days, please. You know, it'd be an honor. Just yeah, man. No part. problem, man. Anytime. Hell yeah. Text me, text me. I'm going to, I'm going to put this right here. Uh, I put my number out there everywhere. Text me. And, and, um, I put it on my last video on the title. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll look it up. Hey, much love brother. Thank you so All much, right, man. Peace. No problem. Catch you. Yep. Okay. People, there's a couple people in here. We got 58 people in here. Uh, 
This is our special guest today, Josh Rickards. What? Man, I I'm so cheap and I'm so broke. <laughs> I don't got I, I don't got that little sound machine. I gotta get one of those, bro. <laughs> so you know we're gonna keep this real simple there's a lot of people out here right now like matt just called in he's watching the show he has nine years experience he's an owner operator he runs his own truck right and so there's other guys that 10 20 years as tankers company drivers there's people all over that are finding success and so today I really want to just get into your story, Josh, and you just let us know what your story is about and if they want to go the direction of owning their own fleet. And I already busted you out a little bit as far as I said, hey, he's there's nothing wrong with lease owners, but you're not leasing onto a company. You you got your own MC numbers. You got your own trucks. When things go real bad, someone's going to call you. <laughs> So, you know, Josh Rickards, you know, uh, thank you for being on the show. And thanks for having me. Of course, brother. Introduce yourself and let's talk about it. Let's talk about your story and how someone can basically get the mindset to start owner operator, start maybe their own small fleet and the realness about it, because there's a lot of fake shit out there about this there's a lot of people saying that you're gonna make a billion dollars you gotta drive bugattis you know lamborghinis and have four yachts so you know go away man introduce yourself let people know well you're calling out the fairy tale guys at the iron skillet uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> i get 18 dollars a mile i got a yacht got eight peter bills and <laughs> <laughs> If anyone's been trucking for a while, we've all seen that guy before, you know. So. Hell yeah. Uh, first thing, real quick. So my mic, I got the, I got the, you know, the headset on. Oh, he flexing. He got a headset. He, right, right. But oh, you can hear me fine. Audio's good. <laughs> yeah, audio's good. Uh, cool, and cool. If the audio's good, can you guys put a unicorn emoji? <laughs> yeah, we want to see them light them unicorns up. If you know? not, I gotta, I gotta figure something else out. Cause yeah, yeah, we'll we'll, we'll start with that first. Uh, <laughs> I can hear you. What up? Let me look up unicorn. <laughs> okay before to make sure that there is there it is so i can hear you fine everyone else if i see some unicorns i'm gonna know if no unicorns put put the uh, poop emoji if, if you can't hear <laughs> check check yeah 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 yeah. let me get a little bit more of the monitors <laughs> i love it i love it i mean it says good uh, uh oh poop one said poop uh oh, we got some poop. We got some poop on the <laughs> got some poop on the feed. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh Hector says unicorn. I think with my unicorn and his unicorn alone, our powers combine. And uh, you know, I, I believe that you got good, you're good to go, brother. So let us know, man. Free ball, talk about what you want to talk about, man. Well, I mean, you did bring up something about my story. Um, you know, I I've been I've had my CDL. I've been pretty much over the road. And when I say pretty much, because, you know, in, in the very beginning, I did more than just drive. But uh, since 2006, I worked for a, uh, a major, a pretty big record label. <clears throat> I really want to keep, you know, today on trucking, though. But, you know, that's where I got my CDL. And, and uh, you know, I was doing, like, music tours and stuff like that, driving over the road. And, you know, I've done, I've done different things in trucking. Uh, but you know, keeping it to the fleet, right? Keeping it to the fleet. So I am a small fleet owner. I operate one truck, as you can see, I'm in right now. Uh, this is a 2020 Freightliner Cascadia that I bought back in uh, September of 19. And uh, I became an owner operator in February of 2018. It's crazy. I remember the dates. Um, and I had, uh, you know, I went and, I went and bought my, uh, I bought my first truck. It was a used truck and I leased on to a big carrier. I'll, I'll say their name, Landstar. I leased on to Landstar at that time. And, uh, you know, for me, becoming an owner operator was a big step. I didn't necessarily do this to become a fleet owner. Right. Um, mm. and, and just to kind of go circle back, <clears throat> I run four trucks. So four trucks, one of those trucks is actually 
my my old truck, which is a 2014 Mac. Uh, he's lease purchasing that truck from me, and uh, he's, so he's an owner operator lease purchasing. So, you know, I'm I'm deducting the payment out of his. Uh, you know, being I'm the carrier, I'm deducting the payment of the trucks you know, of that truck. We have our, we have our uh, arrangement on that truck. Right. And he's leased on. And then I have two other guys that are leased on, uh, with, you know, four total with me operating one of the trucks myself. And, uh, one of the guys that's leased on has his own trailer and truck. Another guy, I went and bought a trailer for like 20 grand cash and he's renting that. He doesn't want to, he just, just wants to own the power unit and so that's my situation i got four trucks i operate or that you know run on on the fleet and uh so going back to you know i become this owner operator in 2018 and and at the time that i was trying to you know that i made the decision okay i'm gonna become an owner operator that was a big step to me right and uh when I became an owner operator, I was like, okay, I'm going to go to this. I'm going to go where, you know, all the freight is. And, and, you know, at that time I thought, okay, I'm going to go to this big company that's specifically owner operators. And I went to Landstar and, uh, I wasn't there for very long. Uh, once I kind of started to see how, you know, things were there, um, I ended up going to this other company called Mercer and then, you know, from Mercer, I, I'm I'm skipping ahead and not going into too much details on those stories. But yeah, at no Mercer, worries, no that's worries. at Mercer was when I was like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to get my own authority. Uh, mm. I think I've got it. And, and so, February of 2018, I applied for my authority in August, and my authority went active September 24th of of uh, 2018 so from february to september 24th i was a leased onto a carrier okay. and uh i do want to tell this part of the story <laughs> it, it, i didn't even think i was even going to say this uh but my authority went active on the 24th of september i hauled my last load for mercer from north carolina to california I get to California, I drop that load off. So it's like, I don't know, it's like the first week of October. I can't remember the exact date, but I'm all excited. My authority's active. I'm taking their stickers off. Uh, there's this, uh, this shop that I had coordinated to, you know, to print out my decals. I, I wanted everything to look good. Right. So I'm, I'm right. like, I got the shop that's going to put my decals on my, you know, my MC number, DOT number, everything. Right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And, uh, the guy was like, Hey, you know, you'll have to, uh, Oh no, no, no. You can bring the trailer over. Cause I, he didn't, he wasn't sure if I was going to drop the trailer or whatever. So I, uh, I'm heading over there and my turbo blue, and my EGR cooler blue, and it ended up being like a, a twelve thousand dollar repair. Damn! Wait up! Wait up! So <laughs> you just got the day in that I, my number went active. Yeah. So okay, okay. So let's talk about that real quick then. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The biggest fear that people have when they're thinking about uh, becoming an owner operator is how much of that maintenance fund, how much of that just in case money should you save up and is there now that you're running four trucks under your business is there a magic number or an equation that someone can use before they jump on their own because before you start one thing i tell people is i do finance and mm -hmm. i do wholesale and trucking and when a guy hits me up and is like, hey, Alex, can you sell me a truck for $12,000 because that's all I got? I'm telling him, do not become an owner operator, bro. Because if mm -hmm. if twenty or 12 grand is what you got and that's it, if a tire pops, you're going to go out of business, right? Mm -hmm. And so is there an equation behind that uh, for someone or uh, average or anything that you would recommend? to save up well the best answer is there's never you never have enough money <laughs> yeah <laughs> you never have enough money running a, owning a, owning a truck you'll never have enough money because you know you you own truck 
You know, yep. you, you know what it is. I mean, you, you never know. You could be going down a road and all of a sudden you hear a sound and that sound could be $3,000 to fix that. Sound, <laughs> <you know? laughs> or you could be going down the road and you just break down. Like in my situation on my way to get the decals. Oh, no, 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 no. I got there and got, well, I got there, got the decals put on. And then, yeah, it was right when I was leaving there. That's when everything blew. Yep. So, <laughs> Boom. <laughs> then, then, then I, uh, I had a, I had a Mac. So, you know, you got to go to Mac Volvo. And, uh, I went over to that tech equipment there in Fontana and, uh, yeah. And I was down for almost a week, I'd say five days and I'm staying in this hotel. Uh, you know, it's one of those situations where, you know, there's like a hotel that, that will, has like a shuttle that will pick people up from that shop. And I'm, and I'm sitting there in the hotel room, like, Oh my God, what am I going to do? You know, I'm Wait up. Oh, can I get, per- like, can we get personal? <laughs> Did you have the 12 grand or, or was that, uh, okay. Yeah. So I was somewhere in when I, when I, right when I got my authority, these are, it's important to put these numbers out. But yeah. When I, right, right when I got my authority, I was like in the twenties, I think I was like, 25 27 K I had to put, uh, I had to get my own plates. Mm -hmm. Uh, I had to put 20% down for insurance. I'll say this. I remember when I got the repair done and everything, and I started on my first load under my own authority, I was down. And to me, that's in the red. That's right. in the red. That's that's actually the lowest my bank account ever went. Even <laughs> even as a company driver, never had my bank account that low that low. I think I was down to like four grand. Damn. And I was like, oh my god, like what so, am I gonna do? <laughs> so I, so I, I hustled. I hustled. I hustled. Hey, I, hey so I, for I, all I, you uh, mother truckers I, out there, I'm man, uh, um, try to stack up as much as you can. It sounds like you know. I always tell people, you know, the least amount. 20 g's minimum you know yeah it's fairly safe yeah after you buy your truck i'm not talking about buy your truck and uh you got five grand left i'm talking after you buy your truck with 10 15 percent down 20 grand so if you want to take the risk you can more I risk had more reward a lot of credit i got really good you know credit and i got i don't know with credit cards i could probably gonna even at that time Right. I still had probably access to 20 or 30 grand of credit, but not that I want, you don't, you know, I would advise yeah, yeah, yeah. people to do that. If you're thinking, Oh, I'm going to buy a truck and then rely on credit to float me. through, right. No, no, no. I wouldn't advise that. So let's, let's backtrack. You dig Matt, yourself a hole there. So let's stay on that story and say you took your first load. Now, if you're an owner operator, you just got your MC numbers, right. And you're taking your first load. Um, what load boards were you using? Any recommendations? What did you learn from that? You know, um, mm -hmm. how did you book your first load? You know, mm -hmm. why would someone take you? Ex you know, no disrespect to you, Josh, but why the hell if, why would I as a shipper take you seriously if you got zero days on your MC number, right? So what do you do? You know? That, that's a tough thing. Cause when I, when I started making calls, uh, I, well, I was in California at the time and in, in, in uh, October of 2018 in California, it was a pretty good market. I was in a good market. Uh, so I remember, I remember making calls, you know, in the beginning, I'll just say this in the first 90 days, you're, you're, you're going to get a few, you're going to get a few that are going to say, nah, like uh, we can't load you. Right. You're going to give them your MC number. Right. They're going to be like, and, and some of them will tell you, they'll say, you know, when you get six months or when you get 90 days, we can load you, but we just can't work with you till then. Now, uh, I, and I, even to this day, I have some direct customers, but for the most part, I'm running 90%, 95%, mostly brokered freight. Right. So yeah. for me in the very beginning, I was on DAT board. Then I'm still run off a of DAT board. Now okay. I have tried truck stop. I've tried, I've tried the other board. Yeah. CH. It, it, yeah. Mm -hmm. So well, and this and now, is not a sponsored video to either. Day, I go to all those boards. <laughs> oh, oh no, I'll, I'll say that. I I have DAT, but I go into well, I'm set up with Amazon now, so I'll look at their stuff. Uh, don't haul it most of the time, and rates are never where I want it to be. But that's another story, right? So right. Um, yeah, and I don't have I don't I don't have loyalty to any one broker, right? To me, it's gotcha. all about the rate. And it's all about you know, like I could. You know, I go CH Robinson on this load. I go Amazon that one, Uber Freight this one, Convoy that one. You know, 
traffics, whatever. There's only one brokerage I don't work with. Um, I don't necessarily need to call them out or go into that. I'm actually, I'm in a lawsuit against this one <laughs> brokerage. So uh, I'm in a lawsuit against one of them and they, that's why I don't work with them. But so that's another story. <laughs> can we say safely and, and you guys in the comments uh, comment as well. If you're a new owner operator and your MC number uh, is less than six months, because that's what a lot of them want. You could jump on DAT and you could probably find a load. Now, is there going to be loads that say uh, we're okay with new drivers or where are they looking for that load at with no experience? Let me give this advice to, I want this advice to go out there. If you're new, if you're a new MC, don't look at it like, oh, who's willing to load me, right? Because... Right. There's plenty of brokers. There's 15,000 brokerages out there. There's plenty of brokerages that are going to load you. You are more likely going to run into a scenario where they're going to know that you're an MC and they're going to try and see if they could take advantage of that, meaning if they can get you for a lower rate or get you mm. to take a load that's a BS load that they know is a BS load. Um, I would, there's some, there's a lot of information out there and, you know, I, I, I would I would try to learn or I would send people the direction of, you know, try to learn what you know, DAT is is definitely recommended as far as a good load board because they have what's called their their 15 day average. You hear that you hear that a lot. I like to just call it the lane rate average what mm -hmm. the lane is moving for at that moment. Um you know, if you have the DAT, if you have like Trucker's Edge, they'll show you that 15 day average. I actually go into a browser, uh, which if you have either a laptop or if you're running off your phone, you can log into the uh, if you got iPhone, Safari, if you got Android, you go into Chrome and you can go log in the DAT that way. Mm -hmm. And then you can type uh, and this is if you have like Trucker's Edge or Power, or one of the. You know, you got to at least have, I think, the $99, $100 a month subscription um, to be able to you know, use this tool because they have the DAT tools. And I would go to tools and then it's called quick rate lookup. And you can do a search on either van uh, on uh, flatbed, you know, open platform, you know, step deck or whatever. You can you can do a search on that or you can do a search on reefer. You can type in the lane. Not only will it tell you the 15 day average, but it will also tell you like a range. Now, keep in mind, and this is what a lot of new guys don't learn off the bat, off, off just coming out here. That's a, a, that's like, that number is not, it's not the Bible, right? That mm. number is not in stone. That is a lane rate average. That is what the lane has been moving for off the data that, that, that DAT is just collecting this data from, brokers and bigger carriers and they're just coming up with that those numbers based on what some of these carriers are getting right at the end of the day if you're running on the spot market you're a new mc and you're sitting there calling a broker on a load don't let that broker try to bully you into or or whatever psychological warfare he wants to use to trick you into thinking that's what the rate should be don't mm. let dat tell you what you think the rate should be don't even let the trucker at the the fairy tale trucker at the iron skillet tell you what the rate should be the in trucking mm. we all operate via supply and demand does the bro if the broker needs the load move if the does the load gotta move quote your rate and that's a more deeper discussion, but you know, right. to just simply put it out there, everyone's cost is of operating is different. So when you're getting into all this, and if you're a new MC, you know what your truck payment is, or if you even have a truck payment, you know how much your insurance is. You know, after a little while, you should pretty much know what kind of fuel mileage you're getting. I mean, these are all numbers that are important. You you know how much your rent is. Yep. I know you know Asian Mike. You know how much you're paying for bills. You know how much oh, you, yeah. like, you know we're 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 getting these bills. <laughs> we one thing for sure we're gonna get is bills. We all gonna get bills. So you know those costs. So quote your rate. If that if if they don't want to pay it, you know if you're in a good market and there's a lot of freight, keep searching. I mean sometimes I could be on the phone 30, 40 times before I find my load. Right. So so that's something that I want to throw out there. If you're a new, if you're a new carrier a new mc there's plenty of brokers that will load you 
but there's even more that will try to take advantage of mm. you being a new MC. So, okay. So how can you tell if the load needs to be there like yesterday? Is it just by the date or is there anything that a new owner operator can look at to know that this, this one is something that I should be getting a little bit more money for if they want it by tomorrow or what have you? There's a lot of factors that go into that. And, you know, that's actually the guys that are least on to me. I'm constantly teaching them this. And, and that's something that I've been working with them real heavily on is, um, and it's something I've been, you know, I'm constantly perfecting, right? There's, right. There, there's no one size shoe fits all in trucking. Right. But now keep in mind, I'm, I haul drive in. So right. that's that I've, I've, you know, I've always felt, uh, master what you do so right. if you do reefer be the best learn everything do every you know be the master of that if you drive in whatever you're doing i'm sure of moving man i'm sure <laughs> you've been doing it for so long you, <laughs> you, you know you, so this actually kind of throw this back at you asian my if if you're if you if if, if someone's coming at if, if if you're getting a dispatch order or whatever, they're saying, Hey, Hey, Jemai, what do you think about this? Like here, you know, here, here's the breakdown on this. You've been doing moving long enough where, you know, okay. All right. So it's going to pick here. It's going to go there. Yeah, What's yeah, involved? Still- how many, how many blankets, how many straps, how many movers, uh, is there, is there a, a, a box truck that's going to beat me or am I, you know, all those factors come into play. So right. when I'm calling on a load, talking to a broker, this is the most important questions I ask a broker. I say, okay, uh, obviously you see the load posted on DAT. The load will say Los Angeles to Cleveland, Ohio. Okay, right. Los Angeles to Cleveland. You call the broker and say, hey, I'm calling about this Los Angeles to Cleveland. What's the de- What can you tell me about that? Mm. What you want to know, you want to know when does it pick? When does it deliver? And the most important thing, a lot of brokers will skip over this. What's the commodity? Because a, a commodity usually kind of right. can get, you know, am I hauling mulch that's cheap and sells at the store for a couple dollars a bag or am i hauling high-end electronics i mean that's going to affect what what rate i'm going to quote i mean i can tell from after a while of experience you can get a pretty good idea what commodities are going to pay i mean mm. you know if you get a move and you know okay i'm i'm moving the uh 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 you know I, i'm moving the so uh the ceo of of Sony Music Group or something here, you know, you know, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, this is a, I want ten this is a times big move, you know. The, I want ten times the money. So for right, for new right. <laughs> for new owner operators, for you guys out there that are just getting to the business, it sounds like from Josh because I don't do spot market, but it sounds like you call the broker and you kind of fill out the broker, like, hey, yep, when do yep. you need this? And if they start kind of crying, and what's a river, all entailed? Right. Yep. Yep. Are you going to have to physically get back there and unload it? Or is it oh, no touch the driver? Yeah, See? yeah, 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 yeah. Because I want $4,000 oh, extra dollars if I got to touch it. Is it a drop trailer? Do you got to drop the trailer and then wait two days to get it? You know? Or is it a live hey, unload? Those are, those are lessons driver. learned, though. Those are lessons learned that it takes people time where they're like, I'm never going to do that again, right? And so, and if you if you don't ask questions, you could end up in on a load that you're like, why did I take this? Or you know, you end up – if you don't ask questions – you're mm-hmm. gonna learn a lesson. Oh, I love. Hey, if you don't ask questions, <laughs> you're gonna learn a lesson. Hey, I'll tell you. A qu- hey, mother truckers, I'm gonna tell you a quick story. One time, I took a load that paid twenty six thousand dollars, and I thought that was good money, and it said it was going to Seattle. But little did I know, there's little uh, um, islands around Washington, mm. and so for twenty six thousand, my ass had to put my semi truck. On, on a ferry. the little ferry boat, which cost me out of my own pocket. And then, of course, there's no movers on the island. So I got to bring guys from my place over there. And then you got to pay for, like, uh, all these people to, like, navigate you and all these escorts. Next thing you know, I'm like, I made no money. And lesson learned, right? Lesson learned. So, you know, let's backtrack just a little bit, Josh. So, you know, when you're getting your MC numbers – that means you have to have insurance, correct? Yep. So here's a big question for people. When they're going out to be a owner operator, they're getting the MC numbers that one of the first things they need before a truck is insurance. 
who the hell is going to take you with no experience as far as the MC goes? Or do insurance policy companies look at that different if you have company driver experience? Can you uh, add on to that a little bit? Actually, you know, that's a really good that's a really good topic. Of all the guys that are leased under me, right? Mm -hmm. They are friends. So my business model, and I'm just going to go in this real quick. My business model. So I'm putting a disclaimer, actually. I'm not recruiting. Right? I don't need people contacting me. I'm not looking for people. Um, what my business model is based on, and it's, and I'm, I think I'm going to continue. I don't even think. I'm going to continue on with that. My business model is the guys that are least under me, I know them personally. Mm. I knew each one of them at least a year before they even came over to me. And, and they were, I was actually with uh, the guy that's in my old Mac, really good friend. We were at Landstar orientation together. Mm. Uh, and uh, another gentleman that's leased on uh, all of them. I know all of them. Right. So I, right. I have this relation with them because when you're a small fleet insurance, is the name of the game, I mean, insurance, that's, the only when you get your own authority, the only people that can shut you down is insurance or DOT. That's it. That's, That's who can it. shut you down. Right. And uh, and that so you know like I, I don't I am the boss, but at the end of the day, you know if 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 FMCSA says nope, you're inactive, I can't operate. If insurance says hey, we're not going to insure you, you can't have a semi truck out here with eighty thousand pounds on the highway without insurance. We all know there's a lot of liability. So so now that goes to uh, – this is a really good topic, right? Uh, one of the guys that is, is, is leased on, I was going to help him get his authority. I was mm. going to show I, – I was walking him through the process to get his authority. Now, the only thing I will say about him, because, uh, you know, I'm not going to put his name out or anything like yeah. that. But he uh, – you're, you're out in Florida right now, right? Correct. Okay. That's where he he lives out in Florida, and his and when you get insurance and when you get your own MC, uh, you know it, it's where your company's out of, right? And so if your if your uh, LLC is out of Florida, and you know then you're going to get insured out of Florida, and you're going to get your you know your authority out of Florida, meaning you're going to go and get your plates through the IRP out of Florida. Mm, and, that's good to know. And, that's good to know. And, and Florida is, <laughs> you probably even know about this as well. Florida is a high cost state for insurance. You guys get hurricanes. Hell a lot of theft. Yes. So he got quoted super high. I think it was like in the 40 something thousand. Almost, I think it was closer to 50 grand. They quoted him for a year for his, his first year on Damn. insurance. So what do you do? Okay, so in this situation, I'm a new owner or I want to be owner operator. I want to get my MC. Mm -hmm. In your let's talk about your specific situation which will help mm -hmm. other other people. They want to uh get into dry van, right? Mm -hmm. Where the hell do you go? Where do you find an insurance company that's going to take you on? You know, well, in my situation with 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 that driver at least under me is uh for him it made sense he, he just said, you know what? I, I can't get my authority. I can, that's way too much for insurance. So, you know, I was like, well, then you can lease under, you can lease under mine. And, uh, you know, we worked out our deal, you know, right. uh, my guys run on a percentage, so I'm getting a percentage and, uh, you know, he, it made sense even after, cause I, you know, I have a cost for insurance. So with my cost for insurance, uh, to him, right. right and my percentage is still better for him. He was like, well, you know, it's still better for me to, I'll just lease under you. So he leased under me, but that wasn't the route that he was originally going to go. He was going to go get his own authority. Mm. And that's, I'll throw that out there, you know, getting your own authority and, and, and becoming the carrier yourself is not always the, it's not the best route for everyone. Um, so I always, when, when actually a guy came to me, uh, uh, was it yesterday? Yeah, it was yesterday. Yeah, yesterday, uh, uh, one of the guys that's leased on, there's, there's a, a mutual friend we both have, and he said, hey, you know, so-and-so wants to, he's look, thinking about getting an authority. So he called me, uh, and I, I spoke to him yesterday, and I tell anyone this. If you're thinking about getting your authority, yeah, you got to get insurance quotes. Now, I, I'll give you a little. I'll give now, you, here's I'll Mr. Chapstick got this. Insurance. So 
Now, here's the thing. He's asking the question, and you're about to give us it. He goes, what's a ballpark okay. for insurance costs? What kind of cargo, et cetera, what you need? Yeah. So just say you're doing yep. dry van. you got to get cargo insurance, and you're going to have to get tractor insurance. What's the Liability, average for yeah. someone that's brand new doing it? What, okay. what would you recommend? And, you know, what are your thoughts about that? I learned this from an insurance agent and, and learning the in, the insurance game is super complicated, right? It's like, right. You, you, you need like, like college degree algebra and all this stuff to try and figure out. There's a lot of factors that go in to what these insurance companies are quoting you. But I learned this from, I learned this from an agent, right? If you're new and you're going to get your authority and you want to get insurance quotes, I would say get two agents because mm. you're going to have like a, a broker, an, an insurance agent, right? And they're going to go shop for insurance for you, right? Now, there's a lot of factors. What type of truck do you have? Do you have a newer truck? Do you have an older truck? If you if you owe on your truck, I like right now, I'm in a 2020 Freightliner Cascadia. I have to have uh, what a lot of guys know is physical damage. That's that's a term you hear in this business a lot. But I mean, it, it's comprehensive, is what it is, right? So I, right. if if I total this, the insurance company has got to pay the lien holder because I have a payment on this truck. They're going to pay the lien holder. There's a loss payee on this truck, right? So that's going to factor into your insurance cost. But when you're getting your new authority, you're going to be you're a new authority. So you know you're going to be on the higher side regardless. And there's only so many companies that do new authorities out of so many states. So here's how it goes. I'm they're listening go now. What, Take your notes, people. They're going to go by what state you're in. So say you're in Florida. Like, gotcha. my, I'm, out of, I'm out of Washington from Seattle here. So I, when you told that story about going up there to those islands in Washington, yeah, I know about those islands. Yeah, I've been on those, <laughs> I've been on those ferries, man. I know, I know that area. I'm from Seattle area. Yeah. And, uh, and so – out of Washington, when I got my, when I was getting my authority, there's only so many companies that do Washington that will, that will insure out of a carrier out of Washington. And mm. there's only so many that will do new authorities. I think, don't quote me on this, but I think there's like 16 companies that do new authorities. I think nationwide there's, I know there's like, it's not hundreds and hundreds and hundreds that do new authorities, right? There's so I many heard. companies on new authorities. Once you start getting more time under your belt, right. then you start getting, you know, you're opened up to being able to be shopped to different. Can, can you name drop some of them? Cause I know I'm not sponsored. Hey, we're not sponsored by any of this shit, but I know progressive is one of them that will do uh, one new of the big ones. Yeah. Yep. So they'll do new authorities. Uh, what's another one that'll do new authorities. My first year I was with canal. It was my first year. Oh, okay. So canal. Yeah. And uh, yeah. someone just uh, asked this question. Uh, I'm with let me progressive go. now. I've been with progressive so, last two years. Oh, let me – and then um, – so someone asked this question. Well, they didn't on, ask, but they said – signed up on my second year. Right. They said, I was quoted eighteen to 20000 a year. Does that make that's sense? Great, actually, does... man, that's great. I, go. Go, Matthew. So, do it. So what, what is my a, a good quote? first year was 18000 So 18000 18000 with Canal. Yep. So um, yep. is that for good cargo money. Good money. And, and, and for uh, the tractor or is that for everything? What, what is 18000 Intel? I had that I had that 2014 Mac at that time, and so yeah, I had a you know I had a loan on it, so I had to have comprehensive physical damage, whatever right. you want to call it. Um, and um, so actually, let me say this real quick too, because this is some stuff that your insurance agents might not tell you, right? I you can get um, if in the event of a total loss, meaning truck, trailer, whatever. I mean, you you got someone came from the other side of the highway and hit me head on. Well, at that point, I might not even be alive, but, um, <laughs> you know, a total loss, right? You roll the truck right. over with some uh, just you, your car falls in front of you. You had to avoid it and you rolled over and damaged everything. Right. So there's you want to ask for what's called combined deductible. So say your deductible is twenty five hundred. Well, you want to make sure that in a total loss, it's not twenty five hundred on the truck, twenty five hundred mm. on coverage for the trailer and twenty five hundred on the uh the cargo because then you'd actually be paying 7500 deductible so i had what's called a 2500 hundred dollar combined deductible which means even in a total loss truck trailer cargo everything 
my deductible is no more than 2500 Now, whenever you do stuff like that, I mean, you know, that, that could affect your premium, you know, because the insurance company is going to go, okay, well, you know, le a less of a deductible is going to be a higher premium and, and, and back and forth. But I do want to get this out real quick. Um, if you're shopping for insurance, get two agents. An agent taught me this. You can get two agents, but no, I wouldn't recommend no more than three. Here's what happens. Mm. It's the same underwriters that, like at Canal, it's the same underwriters, it's the same underwriters at Progressive, it's the same underwriters at all these companies. If you get, if you go to an agent and they come back with a number and you're like, that's too high, let me go to this other agent. And you do that five times, right? you're going to start seeing, and your fifth agent is going to be like, well, Canal rejected you. And you'd be like, what do you mean they rejected me? I got this four other quotes from them. Well, yeah, they rejected you because the underwriters getting tired of seeing your name come across. You know, they're, they're uh, seeing it because it's going to the same underwriter. So I hear you. you I hear. Oh, so it's like pulling credit. It's almost like pulling credit. It's like you're just gonna keep pulling credit, pulling credit, pulling credit. What's it gonna do? It's gonna hurt your credit. So what? What's the, getting all so, these inquiries? What? What do you so recommend? If you get two Josh? agents, if you what, get two, two agents? agents, you're oh, okay. Well, now that you gotta find. I mean, you you. But you, what are you thinking? You go, uh, there's plenty canal, of insurance agents out there. Uh, canal. Oh no no no. The agent or... goes to progress. Goes to canal. So goes where the hell do I find an agent, bro? So when you talk an agent, I'm just mm -hmm. thinking of myself as I don't know what you're talking about. Yep. Where where do I look up an agent? for this look to up, find me look up you can that's the beautiful thing about the world wide web man you can go to google and you can find find a local like if you if you live in washington or whatever i mean you that my first year i actually went to um you know i'm a member of nastic nastic is a it's called national association of small trucking companies uh and they they have their insurance side they're, they're, there's there's so many insurance agents out there you could just look at a commercial insurance agent near you and then you could go to nastic or whoever i mean there's just so many actually once you the reason i kind of left this vague once mm. you apply for your if you apply for your your mc you're gonna get bombarded with agents i mean you're gonna get really? emails and call man they're, 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 hundreds of them are gonna call okay you so okay now i feel a little be bit you. better so you yeah. don't even gotta find them so for everyone that's new here in right. trucking, if you yep. get your MC numbers, now if you need to learn how to get your MC numbers, you don't gotta pay no one to do that. But there yep. are companies out there, you know, that will do it. But go on the FMCSA website and dude, walk in there and learn how to get your EIN number and your MC number. You can do it. You don't have to pay people for that information. Now, just like my boy Josh says, that's a golden tip. As soon as you have your MC number. All of these agents are going to call you. Now, I do want to put something out there uh, because I've done information on a lot of insurance companies as well. Is for everyone out here that's listening, just know that there's actually only a few actual companies that will actually pay for trucking insurance. Commercial trucking insurance is so damn expensive that most insurance is not in house. So, mm -hmm. for example, you might go to State Farm. State Farm sounds like a big-ass company. They're a big-ass company with cars. But, yes, they do have a State Farm commercial side. But when you call them, all they're going to do is give it to a broker that is actually has the capability to write you the insurance. So what they're doing is they're double-dipping off of your ass. So just know that. If you do go, just like Josh says, to one of your local brokers that have – because here's the thing that I learned. I actually interviewed a local broker before. They get certified to uh, uh, to be able to sell you progressive insurance. They get certified to be able to sell you from State Farm, from Canal, all these places. But there's legitly only like a few companies that will actually cover commercial truck insurance. So just know that, people. So at the end of the day, if you want to get insurance for a new company, go to one of your local – if you live out – like I live in Florida uh, uh, near Miami. I can look up Miami Insurance, uh, a bro uh, insurance broker, and they actually have to get qualified to sell insurance for all these companies. So that's all they do. That day, if you want progressive, they'll just wear their progressive hat. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So this insurance game is ridiculous. Every big company is elaborating double on that because I, I left a lot of that out. I see. <laughs> now, there's one thing I want to tell you uh, um, that I don't know if you knew this, but I was thinking about this out loud, right? You tell me what your mm. thoughts about this is. Mm. 
the most expensive insurance out there is actually household names. The reason why is because mm. think about this. Just like when you pay for car insurance, when one person gets in an accident, everyone that pays for that car insurance pays a little bit of it, right? Correct. So that's Correct. how they do insurance. Big so time for trucking too. Big for time. example, who do you think all the big companies have? They have all the name brand insurance. Guess what happens when all these big companies like Celadon and all these that go out of business? That big company, I'm not going to say progressive, but we'll just say State Farm or progressive. Well, now, those big ones are uh, like the big, big ones, like your Knight Swifts and, and right. like they're all self-insured. No, they're all self-insured. But mm -hmm. I'm talking about like just say the bigger companies that have uh, 100 fleet mm -hmm. trucks, 200 fleet trucks. Mm -hmm. Yep. yep. They're they actually carry. under State Farm or progressive. Yep. Well, guess what happens yes, when sir. those companies go out of business? Now, those bigger names have to get their money from somewhere. So where are they getting it from? Mm. They're getting it from you. So mm. that's something I learned. And the agent told me never tell anyone. And I guess I'm a liar because I just told everybody. <laughs> I just told everyone. Yeah, they all know now. Actually, that's, but, damn, that's crazy to think about. Think about because, that though. Like, yeah. Right. And if, and if you if you look at the data, like I, I, I was at, uh, yeah, you've been to Matt's in yeah. Louisville. The big yeah, truck yeah. show, yeah. Actually, I was, was going to go with... this year. I got my ticket, and then COVID happened, and I never got COVID, to go. I yeah. I've been to Gats, yeah. so yeah. Okay, been to Gats. Okay, I was at Matt's in was it Matt's in nineteen? Yeah, I was at Matt's. It was twenty nineteen. I was at Matt's, and uh, I was at um. Well, I went to the the Nastic meeting there, and they were, you know, there's there. I'm I'm interested in all this stuff. I like to know right. the data, and I like to know about the industry. And uh, I think there's over, there's over, they were going over the numbers. There's over 400,000 motor carriers that operate in the North America. And like only, I think what, like, that's a small percentage. I mean, it's small. I mean, don't quote me. It's something, I don't know, 3%. For, it's super small. Right. Our carriers that are like a hundred trucks or more. Right. Most of them are smaller carriers, man. Right. In America. Oh, so I didn't know that. And then, you know, here's a question that you could definitely ask, uh, answer. Robert uh, Bu uh, Robert Burns says, how many trucks will Progressive let you have in a, in a year, two year, three year? So how many? Oh, so that's a great one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I actually talked to my insurance agent the other day. Um, I, because so, my first year I was with Canal and, you know, I, I had my, my insurance agent broker was Nastic. Um, Going into my second year, I switched to a different um, uh, insurance agent. My insurance agent broker is uh, Rice Insurance out of Washington. Mm -hmm. And um, Rice, R-I-C-E. And uh, they, I was talking to the, actually the owner, the, the owner, president, founder, whatever of Rice Insurance. Uh, I was talking to David the other day and he was, uh, he just kind of feel filling me out saying, Hey, you know, like kind of what, what are your plans? And I, you know, I see you're at four trucks now and kind of what, where do you want to go? And we were talking. And so I first year was canal. Then second year progressive. I'm on my second going to third. I just right. renewed. Uh, I renewed, you know, just back in September and uh, oh, last month. And um, I can add one more truck with no issues. So he's like, you can get up to five. If you go beyond that, progressive could be kind of, you know, yeah, because they, they limit your growth. But after, so I can add one more truck with no more issues, uh, you know, from the progress from the insurance side. I, it's not that there's like a magic number, like, oh, mm -hmm. five, that's it, right? They kind of go by, you know, yeah, your time in business. Now, luckily, thank God for that. I have no accidents, no claims on any of my guys no failed inspections you look me up on safer web my usdot number is 3182598 you can look me up immaculate 100% no issues and uh you know that is really important for insurance um but you know talk i would say this to get that answer you got to talk to your agent cuz your gotcha. agent is looking at your operation so my right. agent is like you can go to 5 you're cool now after you know, I finished this year with Progressive. He said the next year, 
oh man, the doors open up. Er, there was one company he wants to shop me to that they, pref- you know, they only take you on if you're five or more trucks and they prefer, they want to help with, you know, you grow. Right. So, right. Um, but the main thing is time and business, right? So they want to see people that have, you know, because you've proven that you can run a carrier safely. And I always, I, I tell people this, and I would say this to anyone, broker, driver, anyone. People like that, like personal friends I know are like, oh man, what's the number one thing to you, Josh? Is it the rate? No, safety. Mm. Hands down, period. That is the number one thing. And there's, it, it, it's, you know, I don't even think that some of these fleets say safety just because, well, that's the, the what sounds like the right thing to say. No, safety is number one. Number one, I want to live today, tomorrow, and beyond, and I want the same for my guys. Um, no load is worth our life. No rate is more important than anyone's life. No, you know, so safety is number one, period. And and I feel like with any – I feel like with anyone, you, like – if you're if you're get you're a new authority, you're getting your MC, you're going to lease on somewhere. Safety's got to be the n- most number one thing because we all trying to make it. We all have a home somewhere, and we all have people that love us and want to see us again. And nothing's more important than than making it to that house or or being able to see them again. And your your life matters, you know. No, and I appreciate that, you know. And so going back just a little bit, if I'm thinking myself now, Josh, as the new owner operator. What's you? Is there a minimum requirement before they'll let you get your MC numbers? Do you need to have at least one year driving experience, and that goes for insurance as well? Or is you there know, a, a certain amount of time in business, or does it just matter if your driver has at least that minimum amount of experience to be in that truck? You know what? What? What is it? When you go to apply to get your your numbers. I mean, FMCSA, they don't even know if you're a driver for all they know, you're, you know, you're starting a trucking company. That's what it is. You're, you're starting a trucking company. You're a carrier for right. all they know, you know, you're applying for the, the MC number and you got to, you're hiring someone to drive. You're not even driving. So no, there's no requirements on none of that. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty open. I'd say just about anyone can, can apply for their authority. I mean, they have their requirements and that's up on the website. I mean, you know, they want you to right. have a, an LLC and, you know, and, and, you know, I would say you want to have your ducks in a row as far as that, have an LLC and a place of business and everything. Uh, FMCSA does say that they will not allow um, PO boxes. So yeah, you can't have a PO box. If you have a mate, a fatality out here, they want a physical address. They can go knock somewhere and find, you know, talk to the owner of this trucking company. So, you know, I do know that you can't do a PO box. You got to have a place of business, you know, no, I hear you. No. So for everybody that's watching, that's just jumping in right now. Uh, you know, we're interviewing Josh today and uh, Josh has four trucks. He has his own MC numbers and we're, we're going down and uh, we're talking about it. So basically to just get everybody up to speed, uh, the man uh, started uh, out with Landstar, went to Mercer. From there, found out that being a lease operator wasn't worth it. He wanted to jump on his own. He got his MC numbers, went from MC numbers, got insurance, went through Canal. Um, his truck blew up the first day uh, <laughs> $12,000. So if you guys want to be owner-operators, have some damn money saved up. There's no <laughs> amount of money, but have it as much as you can. And so, and if you guys want to get loads, you know, we're not sponsored by DAT or CH or any of these damn load boards, but he did go to that and DAT load boards. uh, They were able to uh, help him out because there's a lot of trucking uh, shipping companies that don't want to work with people that don't have less than six months experience, right? They want six months or more or sometimes and a year. there's even more that will take advantage of you because you're new. So if you're ready to get uh, your ass handed to you and taking advantage of, uh, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> at least one place for now will give you a start. Uh, DOT, uh, DAT boards. Uh, I know I Uber, put it like that. <laughs> <laughs> Uber boards might too. There's a couple of them, right? That, that might. Yeah, no, actually, uh, C H Landstar, H- you can you can get, you can uh, get it set with Landstar from day one and and pull off of there. Okay, uh, there we go. They're, they're broker freight. Yeah, so Landstar right there, a lot of freight. everybody got a broker freight. J B Hunt has one. Everybody, yeah. everybody has one. Okay, so yeah. 
Uh, just know that. And a lot of people are asking if you have a YouTube channel. He does not have a YouTube channel. He doesn't want a YouTube channel. He's just jumping <laughs> on here just to help us out. So now that people are kind of, you know, have an idea, um, here's a question just to backtrack real quick, Josh. Mm -hmm. How many years in the game from company driver before you – should consider becoming owner operator is that a vague question because some people don't know when that is you know yeah i wouldn't i mean i know a lot of people just want a number right they're like oh one year two years this that and the other right you know i've i've known people that became an owner operator of one year right and i i've known people that have gone out and gotten their authority sooner i've no, i mean it really comes down to your level of confidence. Right now, don't let fear dictate you. Right. I would say this to anyone because mm. yeah, I was nervous and I, I had fear of getting my authority, becoming owner operator, all that stuff. Right. Uh, there, there's times where you, I mean, yeah, if you, if you never have enough money, yeah, it's nice if you got 20 grand, but do you have to, to make it work and to survive? Mm. The, the answer to that question is, what are you willing to do? See, I don't always tell people to get their own authority because I've learned that not everyone is willing to do what Josh Rickers, what I'm willing to do. There are mm. a lot of, you know, it's it's like, it's like, I mean, this might not be the best example, but, you know, it's like looking a, at a Navy SEAL or a Marine and saying, well, you know, that, that, that that's really cool what they do. Well, yeah. Are you willing to go through what they went through to get to where they're at? You know? Right. And so that's the, that, so if you say, well, I want to be a Navy SEAL. Okay. Well, here's the training. Here's everything's involved. Here's what, what, you know, I, I, if I told you how many sleepless nights and how much stress and how much anxiety and how much, you know, and how many, how many bull, bull crap loads and how much of this and all, if I went over everything, I, if I told you all the, all the challenges I went through, you might not even want to do this at all. You'd be like, I want nothing to do with that. <laughs> so it really just comes down. I think, I think that only the person can answer that question themselves. Obviously I would say it's good to have some type of experience. I mean, I've, I, I actually say this to guys, I'm like, Hey, you want to get all the yellow poles out of your way in a company truck? Because when it's your truck, you're the one paying for that the repairs. So if you got some yellow poles still left in you, go do that in their truck. Don't do it. In, and don't go buy your own truck. You know? No, I hear you. So, you know, at the end of the day, I, I myself personally think, because I'll be honest with everyone on here. I straight up went from Walgreens, quit my job. I was with my unk every year, every summer moving furniture. That dude was like, man you better stop making that Walgreens money and jumping in this truck. And I go, why do you actually make money? Cause you've been paying me nothing. <laughs> you know, every summer he'd give me like 300 bucks, you know? And I was excited. I, I went and bought the new Nintendo, super Nintendo PlayStation. Right. I was excited about it and I got to spend time with him. So, you know, all jokes aside, but then he was like, nah, you can make money. I quit my job in, at Walgreens as an assistant manager, making 60 G's a year. I'm in truck school. I come out. I go with him for about six months just to learn how to drive the damn truck. And then he gave me a POS international that was probably worth 1500 bucks. But I really probably have paid for it myself through helping him for that six months. <laughs> but it gave me a chance. So I've been in a sense, an owner operator since day one, you know, but again, I had someone to back me up. The hardest part about moving is loading the furniture. I've been doing that my whole life. So I just have to learn how to uh, uh, drive the damn truck. So if you guys have the hustle out there and you really got the hustle, man, you'll be successful as a company driver. You'll be successful as a lease operator. You'll be successful as a freaking owner operator. Shoot. You'll be successful being the greeter at Walmart. You know what I'm saying? Like if you got hustle, I don't care what you guys do, man. You're going to make it work and you're going to make money doing it, you know, and I get a lot of people that ask the question, what's wrong with leasing? There's nothing wrong with leasing. Let's be honest. These damn mega carriers and tell me if I'm right or wrong, Josh, these damn mega carriers <laughs> will give you a $1,200 payment a week and you paying like 45, 46, $5,000 a month in truck payments. And by the time you find out you ain't making no money. They're cleaning up that truck for the next guy that they have in orientation. 
So that's what sparked up this interview. That's my you know, comment regarding that. <laughs> that's the real hustle. If we're going to keep it real, real, think about it. Nothing's free. Even if you go to Costco, you got to have a membership. Nothing mm -hmm. in this world is free. So when they tell you, and I'm not bagging on any company, but you know, a company that everyone would know, let's just say Swift. Okay. What happens after six months to a year? You should be your own owner. Here's a lease owner operator position. And guess what? We won't even care if you walk away. No one is on your side. Even the friends that you think you have that are your homies, they're willing to let you cut the only back cuts. And I learned that the hard way. I'm sure you did too, being in the record label industry like you were talking about. You know, Very people will let you win. People will let you win all day, but not more than them. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when a company says, you got six months, a year experience, go lease with me, walk away, here's a new truck, don't worry about it. There's a reason why they'll do it because you feel like you're gaining something out of it, but they're the one winning. It's like the casino, man. You never got to beat the house. So what would your recommendation with that? If you do want to lease, would you recommend <laughs> leasing on with uh, a, maybe a smaller fleet, you know, never with a mega carrier? What are your thoughts about that? That's a really, really good topic. That's kind of what sparked up this interview because I, I put a a comment. Uh, you were you had that video about Prime leasing on the Prime, right? Right. And uh, I put a comment. I said I, I was I was a bit aggressive. I get it. Yeah, I was. Uh, <laughs> I said not only are Prime lease operators bad at math, oh. but they get, <laughs> but they but they get they get screwed over the worst way, right? Because and I say that. And, you know, this is where it brings people up in an uproar. And, th and, and, and this is where people can argue with you online and person and everything. I, mean, I don't get, I don't get, I don't get why it's this way, but let me put it out there. Those are not good deals. Those are not good deals. None of those lease purchase deals. KLLM, Prime, we could name so Swift. None of those are good deals. I, I was never in one of those deals, and they could never convince me to get in the deals. Now, there's a lot of guys on YouTube that that push and promote that, right? And that those are the guys. And a part of the reason why I don't do YouTube, I don't want to argue with those guys. I'm not here to. At the right. end of the day, some people are happy giving mm. their money and making mm. those companies rich. Some there's some people are happy with that. They're cool with that. My message isn't to that person that's happy. There, there are guys that I, I, I've argued with guys at Landstar to say, oh, I'd make, oh, I'd make this or that. Let me say something. On the talk record, to me. On the record. On the, rec on the record and on paper. Uh-oh. None of those guys beat my rates. None of those guys make the money I make. They do not do it. I've had them left and right. I've man, I I've sat there and go, okay, let's bust out rate confirmations, and then you know, and then they just want to argue, and they and they just want to go, well, you, you, uh, and they just get frustrated, right? And I've had, and, and then I learned, I learned myself to waste the time to even argue with them mm. because at the end of the day, they're happy with, they're happy there. Now, can you come up with can you all break reasons this out? Why Landstar is so great? Now, can you break this out because you did work at Landstar and you did work at Mercer. Mm -hmm. On average, there's nothing wrong with these companies. But if you know what you're really walking into, you're going to be happy if you know the truth. You agree, Josh? So, at yeah, and, Landstar, and, 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 is there and an average? I don't get why a lot of people argue it. Like, a lot of them will defend it and try. And, and that's I, – I try not to do that anymore and of arguing with them. I just right. kind of go, yeah, yeah, whatever, you know, whatever. Hey, you're happy. You're happy. You're happy. Cool. It works for you. Uh so but a lot the, of them is there an argue average? It, you know, like is they're there defending. average at Landstar that you would recommend? So if I if I go, you know what, Josh? F you. I don't care what you're saying. I hate <laughs> right, you. Right, right. <laughs> I'm going to Landstar, and then you could at least take him to the side and say, "Yo, you can go to Landstar, but you're going to probably, if you work your ass off, average this type of money." So put into the pocket. Is there an average that you that you were making as a Landstar driver? You know, mm. 50, 60 G's. Is there is there a number out there that you, you could actually say that's comfortable that someone can real, realistically make? And if they know that number, 
at least they're going there knowing that number. And if that number is better than them yeah. working at CR England, then that's cool. As long as you're leveling up, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, there's there's a big difference between the two. Prime, uh, you know, a lot of people know how the Prime model is. You know, you're going to have a dispatcher, so that's really going to dictate and govern, you know, what you can make. And right. and and a lot of people know that are, that are familiar with them, like how you know they they lay out. Here's what you're going to pay on the truck. You're uh, you're going to overpay for the. I mean. What all these those companies? Let, let me address the primes and the KLLMs, right? Gotcha. I'm gonna address Let's them first. Those companies have figured out that there's only so much money you can make hauling freight. Mm. There's only like even even from where I'm sitting, there's only so much you can make from hauling freight. So what makes these companies? I mean, their their business models are genius. They really are. They learn okay if you can only make this much money moving freight. Oh. But you can make money on the driver and you can make money on the truck. It's almost mm. like AT&T going, wait a minute. There's only so much money. There's only so many people you can get to, to, to have your phone service. Oh, but wait, what if you can get them this? Or if you can get them this streaming service, let's buy out HBO and let's get them this streaming service. So these primes have figured out, well, wait a minute. We can make this money home freight. We can make – that's why the owner of Prime has – he owns truck dealerships. And then he said, you know what? I'm going to own the hotel that the drivers stay at. I mean, it's just – it's it's a hey, you know, they're, they're – they're, it's so a that's a, so that's they, a real They've hustle. mastered the art of making money. Hey, and, and, and the art of making money on you because I you're doing that. the work. You're the driver. You're hauling the load, paying overpriced for the truck. So that's their model, right? Right. Landstar model is a bit different. Now, Landstar, Landstar's got a lot of different, man, they got some different contracts, right? And there are some guys that are going, oh, Josh, and you know, you're like, you're right. There's some guys that go, well, Josh, I have I was at Landstar this long, and I got hooked up with this agent, and I'm on this dedicated, and this pays like this great money, right? They finagled their way into that. But my rebuttal to that is well not everyone coming to landstar jumping on and even you would probably address that as well is going to get that you know like they've they kind of work their way into that niche so at the end of the day um i my recommendation is going to be in, in, in line with my story and my recommendation is definitely going to be run the spot market that's where i prefer to be uh I don't want to give none of those companies my. I mean, Landstar is publicly traded. If you want to give them your their money, I don't know. Go buy stocks and their go buy shares. You know, right. and and it, well, and then you can invest into them. But, um, you know, I no, I, I don't believe in 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 giving. So if you're at 25%. so okay, so if you're at Prime for a year or two years, whatever that number, when you're feeling comfortable to start on your own, then you can go buy your own truck, and then after you buy your own truck. You should start your own MC and mm. do your own damn thing. I'm more ruthless. I'm more. I'm more cold hearted. I'd say don't even go. I wouldn't even go to a prime. I'd say I don't know. Work at a company a little bit longer and just work on your credit and stuff. That's my recommendation. But that's only yeah. me speaking. I wouldn't. Hey. I don't. I wouldn't even <laughs> get in bed. I wouldn't even hey. jump in that bed. That's like. That's like man. If you know, it, it's like. It's like okay, so girl, okay, let's that back girl up. looked good, but she got A's. I don't know. I want to touch it. <laughs> hey, it got hey, A's, man. Stay away. Hey, so okay, let's backtrack a little bit. You're in CDL school, okay? Your goal is to be where you're at. You know, there's a couple people yeah. on here. Cash is king. You know, there's my man Matt on here. You know, there's other guys on here that are owner operators making good money right now, right? Mm -hmm. But that's their goal. They want to be you guys, okay? Now, is there a blueprint you would give them? Go to CDL school. Where do you go after that? Prime, Swift, Knight, JB Hunt, all these damn places are telling you to go work for them. Where should you go? What are okay. your thoughts? I wouldn't say a specific company, but I would say if, if that's if 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 that's your goal and you and your your tunnel vision, you know, you've, yeah. you've got your eye on the prize, right. you know, just go wherever you can go to to wherever you're happy with that you can get the experience because yeah we i mean we all agree having some experience yeah i wouldn't say get your own authority and and, and buy a truck and you you know you've never hauled freight before you you know yeah i mean it's obviously a lot better to to 
you know, get some experience and the type of trailer haul that you want to do. So, yeah, if you want to do dry van, well, there's plenty of dry van companies. So I would just say the, the answer to that is go with whatever company does that type of trailer haul that you're wanting to do when you go under your own authority, whether it be reef or whether it be dry van, mm-hmm. whether it be flatbed or 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 step deck. Um you know, if you want to work your way into learning RGN and stuff and, and getting into the oversized stuff, hey, well, you know, like I would I would focus in on a, you know, go somewhere where where that's, you know, you're 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 learning what you're ultimately going to be doing when you get your own authority. And then um, or or if you're going to lease on somewhere, you know, so if you're if you're straight from CDL school, well, yeah, I mean, whatever. It, I would say this, if you went with a company, even if you don't necessarily like them, we'll try to stick it out for a year or two. I'd recommend that. You know, I okay. wouldn't say, I wouldn't say hop around to 10 different companies in two years. Cause that does, that's, that does no one good, you know, yeah, no, I hear like, that. like no, stick no. it out, you know? No, that's good advice. And I want to let all these mother truckers on here. You know, I appreciate you guys, you know, right now, Josh, they love you so much. You know, they saw mm-hmm. that pretty pace. You know, we got about 139 <laughs> truckers watching us right now. And so, you know, I never get those kind of views. So they just want to see your ass. They don't want to see me. You know? I want to give um, someone a shout out if you don't mind. Uh, you do might. It. I don't know. I don't know if you've ever interviewed her or you know about her. I want to give a shout out to Jacinda Lady Trucking. Uh, did you Did you watch the recent Emmys? Man, I don't got time she was for that. In, right. She was She the Emmys. She's a, a, a female trucker who's just an amazing human being mm-hmm. but uh the emmys was hosted by uh man why is his name slipping my head and people will be like what you don't know so and so he got his own show uh slip my head right now but the the on the recent emmys they did a uh like uh five essential workers mm-hmm. and you know they they did someone in in, in, in health i think they did like um well, I only watched her part, so my bad. <laughs> but they they picked five essential workers, and Jacinda represented, you know, the trucking community. Oh no, Jacinda, 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 yeah, Jacinda. yeah, 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 yep. yeah. She she does car hauling. She did car hauling. She actually just switched. Now she's, uh, I think she's yeah, yeah. learning. She's learning something. Different. I think she's getting into like the RGN stuff yeah. now. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. That's right. I'll Shout be... out to Jacinda. She's an no, amazing okay, human Jacinda. Being. I heard you say Jacinda or something. Okay, Jacinda. Yeah, just. She always says, just send a lady trucking coming at you. That's her, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. I was actually in her cab, like, uh, at the Gat show. But to let people know, I was in her cab with my girlfriend, if that makes it sound better. <laughs> okay? She was <laughs> showing me. That makes it sound hey, better. <laughs> she was showing me her truck and uh, the inside of it. My girl was there. She was showing me her truck, <laughs> and that was it. But Jacinda, I do know Jacinda. I met her at Gat's. Uh, we talked on Instagram. She's big on Instagram. I got a lot of love yep. for her too. So Josh, uh, Rickers want to say shout out to Jacinda. You know, I didn't know that. Congrats on that. I, I didn't know that. That's a big deal, man. And, um, you know, I love to see people winning like that. So yeah, it's awesome. That's, that's what's up, man. You know, I, I want to say this, man, in closing, because there's a lot of stuff. That, I mean, there's a lot of stuff to talk. Maybe I'll jump on another time and we can go more into other things. Yeah. There's, there's so many pieces to this puzzle. But I think the I think the biggest breakdown for 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 people that to, to understand is there's a lot of information out there. I always try to advise people of where to seek the information, you know, so learning uh we, we actually covered a lot on this. So if they go back and, you know, and, and watch this, or if you edit this up and put out a, a video on it later. Um, yeah, there's, it's, it's not rocket science. I mean, we're not, we're not, you know, we're not trying to figure out how to get a rocket to Mars and how to land it here, you know, so it's not rocket science, but there is a lot of pieces. There's a lot of stuff to learn. There's a lot of stuff to learn when, when it comes to getting your authority. There's a lot of stuff to learn when it comes to buying your truck. There's a lot of stuff to learn when it comes to insurance. There's a lot of stuff to learn when it comes to negotiating with brokers. I mean, there's a lot to learn. So, you know, I think uh, to sum it up, it is important to have, yeah, you know, like I wouldn't say you need to be six months or two years or three years. And I I became owner-operator at the point of, uh, of you know, I got – 
my CDL in 2006 and went over the road first time on a music tour in 2006. I ain't mm-hmm. become an owner operator till 2018. That's 12 years, you know? So there's no set, you know, now, now where I'm sitting, I wish I'd have done it earlier. I probably, you know, I, I got to do some cool stuff in the music business. So I got a lot of good memories, but you know, if I went back in time, knowing what I know now, I'd probably do this earlier, but uh, in closing, man, I want to say Asia, my, you are, you're awesome. I'm going to tell you why I think you're so awesome, man. You speak to so many people and in our business and in, in trucking industry. And, man, you, you're you a great person because you got love for everyone, man. It doesn't matter if you're a big, small woman, guy, however you identify yourself, race, creed, color, religion, none of that matters, man. And I think that's, I think that's something our country in a whole needs right now. You know, it's just like, you know, man, like we, you, you don't necessarily go, Oh, well, I only want to interview these type of people or that type of man. You got love for so many people out here, out here in, in our business, man, you do so much for our industry. So shout out to you, man. You, I know you, I don't, I don't, I feel like you don't give yourself enough credit, man. Oh you, man. Hey, we, hey so man. guys like me appreciate <laughs> what you do, man. man you, hey, I'll tell you this, man. Thank you so much for the kind words, but I ain't nobody, man. Shoot. You know, I got, I'm bald. I can't grow a beard. I mean, uh, I actually bought a toupee before cause I didn't feel confident. And then I made um, fun of myself cause I was going to put it on just to be a joke. But the serious truth was I thought this toupee was going to look real. I, I was thinking I was going to be able to scam all these people from going from bald to having Justin Bieber hair. But you know, I didn't know why I think that would work, but I'll be honest, man. Like I, I never had this type of confidence in my life, you know, and a lot of times I, I'll keep it real. I, I just feel like, you know, we're, we're doing our best to, to get the message heard. And sometimes I feel down, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like people maybe not care about the message or what have you. So when, when people are showing love like this, when you're showing love like this, like you are making my day, bro. Like, like, <laughs> I'm not even joking, man. Like those, I, I really appreciate you. Uh, mm-hmm. you. 146 people are watching this damn thing. I, I remember my first live when it was just my mama and my neighbor that jumped on mm-hmm. and I was so excited and, and to have this many people take time out of their life. And I, I apologize if Josh and I didn't get a chance to answer some of your questions. Uh, but, uh, you know, we'll make sure that I'll look through the messages so that we could get to it next time. But I definitely appreciate you for that brother. And, uh, uh, definitely anytime you would like to jump back on the show, we could talk more about now that they know how to become an owner operator and what the mindset of a fleet owner is. Maybe next time you could put them on some game of, uh, where to maybe buy the trucks or how to get financing for that. Or, you know, I'll how tell you my to... favorite thing. Yeah. Negotiating. Uh Oh, so That's, can we, oh, can we do like a live <laughs> negotiation? Cause <laughs> we, I know my we, man, we Cassius King. One time. Yeah, we dude, that would be sick. Time. Yeah. This one I'm on right now, this load I'm on right now, it was supposed to be a drop trailer, but they're actually loading me right now. The guy, like, I showed up here, and dude was like, well, I mean, you can drop it if you want, but I'm going to load you right now. It's like, cool. So it loaded me right now. Uh, I'm in Carson, California, going mm-hmm. to drive in, going out to uh, out towards uh, Ohio. Mm-hmm. 8,500, man. 8,500. 20, uh, I think like 2,307 loaded miles and I deadheaded, uh, it was like 30 something mile deadhead. So let's just, let's just put it to 2,350, man. 8,500 divided by 2,350. There's the rate per mile. You tell me how I did, you know? Dude, can, I mean, can we do some negotiations? That'd be sick. Just have it on speaker. I don't know what the legality of that is. Uh, we, yeah, <laughs> so like, well, okay, the 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 name of the brokerage can't be put out there, but um, but yeah, well, you know, what's crazy is because like, I, I I would have to just figure out how we could do that because you know sometimes man, it takes like you know it's not like they you know everyone I call is gonna give me the rate you know so it's just not always like that you know. Yeah, sometimes yeah. So, it's like sometimes we go through the rigmarole and then I'm like, all right, well, if anything changes, just give me a call and I'm on to the next one. You no, know? I hear you. I hear you. So maybe what we could do is 
we could give a couple scenarios for someone that's new and we mm -hmm. could put together some steps. I could do that. Yeah, I could do that and kind of because every everyone's going to be different. I think you just kind of, you know, like, well, there, there's the the art of the deal man. you got to learn how to negotiate in general. Right. So like, yeah. you know, Hell I'm yeah. actually looking at, I don't even know if I'm going to, I've been looking at buying a, uh, I got a 2016 F-150 that I bought new. It's only got mm -hmm. 25,000 miles on it. I wonder why, you know, <laughs> yeah, I heard that. I, <laughs> I heard wonder that. why <laughs> I'm all driving this, not my pickup truck, but yeah, I, I've been like going to these car dealers, right. Cause I'm looking at getting a, I was looking at either a new Ram limited, or like a, or getting like a F one fifty Lariat, or uh, I was looking actually at the Nissan Titans, like the, uh, well not the, I looked at the Platinum Reserve, but they only have one type of, of interior color. It's just brown, and I was like, that's it, you know. So I was looking at the Pro four X, you yeah. know, I was looking at um, uh, the GMC Denali stuff like that. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. look, man, I'm not bragging, but I'm at a point where I'm like, yeah, man. I mean, I. I've always lived below my means, even if I have, and even if I had millions and millions and millions of dollars, I've always been that guy that just kind of lives below my means. I've been very frugal. And, uh, but you know, I think I'm finally at the point where I'm like, all right, I'll treat myself. Right. I'm hey, hey we got to flex I'm some of that, at, man. Motivation, but, man. Know, all these car dealers, yeah. they are like, they hate me, bro. They're like, this guy, I negotiate. Cause I'm like, man, I negotiate 30, 40, 50 times a day, bro. Like this is what I do. I negotiate. So they're just yeah. like, oh my God, this guy is just, he's, yeah, <laughs> I'm that guy. Hey, I'm so that guy. That, if I walk so, in the car, hey, the ship, they're like, so, oh man, this dude, here's this dude. Let's put together <laughs> uh, uh, some videos where we're teaching people how to negotiate. Yeah, we and, do that. And you know what I mean? And this is just from Josh's point of view as, you know, a fleet owner that, uh, you know, has four trucks under him. And so you can sound that, a little bit cocky, but by all you know, means, I'm there. I'm not the best that ever lived. I mean, it's nothing like that. Right. It's just, but you know, getting good at it, there's definitely some stuff I can teach people, but I'm not going to come out here and say, Oh, you know, like I know I said earlier, I said, no oh, Landstar guy could touch me on the rates or whatever. I mean, that's just, <laughs> Hey, I got confidence, man. That is what <laughs> hey, it is. but that's you know, what we I'm need because confident. we can at least say, and we'll end it from here is yeah. You know a little bit more about negotiating than someone that doesn't have their MC number. We can say that. Yeah, definitely. And, so, and I would love to teach them. I mean, you know, that's the that. That's how how the much money is it going to cost, man? Out there, uh, are they? Are, are we going to have? You know, are you going to charge these people to learn this, or you got some free time, or do can I pay you? Or? They getting it right now and here, free ninety nine. You getting it right? You getting it right on the Asian <laughs> Mind Show directly. <laughs> That's where you get it. Subscribe, hit, 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 the, hit the little bell below, and subscribe to Asian Mai, and that's where you get it. Uh, I wrote that for you, ninety nine, baby. Hey, no, I thank you so much, Josh, man. Uh, yes, I you. appreciate you for your time. Everyone on here, uh, stay blessed, and we'll be good on it. You know what I'm saying?